I'm sorry about the delay and uh, it's because of the these very high-tech uh, equipment uh, about, about uh, which we are not very, you know, I'm, I'm not very familiar with this high-tech equipment. Uh, my laptop is not being displayed through the uh, uh, projector. So uh, anyhow, I'm Jim Sher Nasir and I'm uh, an Associate Professor in Ophthalmology at FMH. Uh, uh, the objectives uh, of this presentation, I am going to have two presentations today and a couple of days later. Uh, the objective of today's presentation is uh, that at the end of the presentation each participant should, should be able to understand common eye presentation in family medicine clinic, diagnose and treat simple uncomplicated eye diseases, identify serious eye conditions and refer them to the ophthalmologist. Uh, and finally educate patient correctly and scientifically. Now the outline uh, of presentation it includes generally divided into four uh, subgroups. Uh, overview of the common presentation in the, in the GP clinic as well as in ophthalmic clinic. And number two is the history relevant points. Number three is the clinical examination and number four is the interpretation of clinical finding and relevant examination. I've tried my best to make this presentation very palatable and simpler and uh, I hope if you have any question, query during the presentation, you're most welcome to ask. Um, I'll be happy to answer if I know the answer. Now, the, there are generally two sets of present, uh, presentation in the clinic, the, gen, uh, the children as well as the adult. Uh, and as far as I am concerned, in my in my uh, clinical practice, 40% of the outdoor is uh, children, and 60% adults. Somehow I don't know uh, what is the reason. Uh, it should have been less. But the children presents in the ophthalmic clinic, as well as in the GP clinic, with the commonest problem of refractive error, uh, malalignment of the eye. Now these are the complaints which the parents actually they come forward and they complain about their children. Uh, commonly with refractive error and then malalignment or misalignment of the eyes, uh, frequent red eye uh, presentation and uh, there is infection of the eye and then discharge uh, from the eye. In, in adult presentation is slightly different from the, the children uh, presentation in children and the, again the commonest presentation is refractive error. 40% of the pre presentation in the outdoor is refractive error. So it's, it's a huge amount of uh, work uh, which is related to the refractive error and uh, then visual deterioration other than the refractive errors, eye irritation, discomfort, a very, very common pro problem and presentation. Patient comes, eye irritation, or uh, they have different, you know, uh, ways of uh, telling it. And then allergy, another uh, very common subject and day by day it's, it's gaining popularity, it's building up with the um, uh, introduction of new allergens and the self-medication syndrome. I'll try to touch this subject as well, which is one of my favorite, is a self-medication, and uh, if I have time. Now, in the history, the rele re uh, relevant uh, points uh, would be, uh, if a patient, child, or adult is presented in the outdoor uh, with refractive error, if you're suspecting refractive error, there are certain things which, uh, which is to be asked, which are to be asked. Number one is inability to read distant object. Are they able to uh, read and see this, the, the neon sign very clearly, billboard very clearly or not? Or they can see the television clear, they can see or not. So distant visual deterioration is one subject which is generally related to myopia. And the second presentation is inability to read closer object. Now that's a short vision deficiency. In such patient, the distant vision is all right. The shorter vision, the closer vision is at fault. Number three is the blurred, distant, as well as reading, both. Now, uh, for uh, blurred, distant, and closer vision, the reason is a stigmatic problem. Uh, if we, uh, you know, divide the causes of refractive error, majority, they come under, under the domain of myopia, and then they come under the do domain of myopic stigmatism then hypermetropia and then hypermetropic stigmatism which is the least common in the uh, clinical outdoor. Now why uh, this fact or figure is applicable to young subject and I have not included the press biopic after 40 years age refractive change that 
most of you and uh, I also have that problem is a reading. That's a normal physiological change. So that is not a disease. I have not included in this figure. The prominence is myopia, then my myopic stigmatism, hypermetropia, and then hypermetropic stigmatism. Now, refractive error patient can present with headache, eye pain, or dull pain in the eye or eye strain. Now, eye strain is a very difficult symptom to analyze, but the complaint is when they are looking at, at an object which is the distance of which is fixed like television screen or like uh, computer screen or when they're reading and focusing on the book they the eyes at strain the, the eye is feeling strained so these are the three uh, scenario when a patient can complain or refractive error can complain uh, to the patient and uh, in the in the outdoor uh, malalignment, misalignment, deviated visual alignment, there are so many names, uh, they are also mode of presentation. But the uh, important uh, thing about the malalignment is the presentation at the age of what? Most of the diagnosis is made on this simple statement. Now, the commonest, uh, the, the uh, squint, uh, the other name is squint, strabismus is another name, Malalignment is the accommodative esotropia. Eso is when the deviation is inward towards the nose, and exo is when the deviation is outward towards the temporal side. So, commonest uh, uh, squint is accommodative esotropia. Eso is inward, tropia is a squint, and accommodative is when uh, the accommodation is involved. Now, uh, this typically starts uh, at the age of three years. Why uh, three years? The reason is that at three years, the child now have sufficient good vision to accommodate for closer distance. Now, uh, just a uh, uh, you know, developmental uh, facts, I'd like to share it with you. At the time of birth, the, uh, the vision is very, very blurred. I think the child uh, should be able to just recognize, not child, infant should be recognized only the light and dark. By the age of six months, they further develop and they can recognize larger object, moving object like that. At the age of one year, they can even focus or see or this smaller object. By the age of three years, they have, uh, they started developing the accommodation and that's the time when there is, if there is a deficiency of, uh, of short-sightedness, uh, short uh, short that's the time when the child starts focusing or concentrating for the near object. And in doing so, because of the deficiency, they converge too much, leading to esotropia. Now, convergence and accommodation are, they, they go together, of course. So that is the reason. So, uh, so at the age of three years, it's generally accommodative esotropia. Divergent squint, the eyes, when the eyes are going out, uh, generally present either at the time of birth, when it is associated with some organic disease, or maybe later five or six years of age. Uh, there could be hypertropia when the eyeball is elevated upward, one of the eyeball is elevated upward, and hypo when it is elevated, it's depressed. Uh, there could be uh, muscle paresis or paralysis. Now, uh, this should be differentiated or uh, from the squint. In squint, uh, in true squint, we, we call a conco uh, uh, concomitant squint, the muscles are functioning all right. It is the coordination which is, defect, which is defective. All the muscles, all the six muscles which are moving the eye right, like, uh, right, left, up, down, rotating the eye, giving torsional movement, everything, they are absolutely all of the coordination between the two eyes. In muscle paralysis or paresis, it is the defect with the muscle. Uh, I'm going to give, it, uh, give the example in the later stage of the presentation. Eye infection, very common. We know the hygienic condition. We know the awareness of the, the edu educational level of the patient. Infection, they put their uh, fingers, dirty hands, finger into the eye. And that's the commonest way uh, the, the infection is traveled into the eye. Now, I like to differentiate two very important signs. Now, one is infection and the other is inflammation. Uh, there, could, there are a number of reasons uh, or causes for infection and there are few reasons for inflammation. Inflammation does not require anti antibiotic. However, the infection requires antibiotic. In inflammation, it could be uh, ultraviolet light, it could be very bright uh, light, it could be uh, some, uh, some fumes or chemical paint uh, and uh, so uh, they can initiate allergic condition, it can initiate inflammatory reaction in the conjunctiva and the eye is red. It, is, it requires only anti-inflammatory anti uh, drops 
which could be a non-steroidal or steroidal or and the infection and uh, they could be viral, bacterial, fungal and protozoal. The discharge from the eye is very important. Now it's a very simple to, uh, to, to look at the discharge, make a diagnosis, treat, very simple. Uh, mucus or mucoid discharge is associated with, uh, with the allergic reaction or a foreign body within the eye. Uh, a watery or a clear discharge could be insult or inflammatory reaction or viral infection. Now, throughout the year, these two or three months, uh, July, August, September, it's a time of the year when the uh, epidemic viral conjunctivitis is, you know, it's, it comes every year and uh, it uh, presents with very diffuse swelling of the conjunctiva, redness, watery eye and the discharge is water, watery, it's a very, very thin like water discharge. Uh, and finally, the infective discharge, which is thick and contains pus. Um, um, I don't know, I, I have a passion to define visual acne time and again, this is a new definition, but a general literary definition would be uh, to, um, uh, is, is the ability to see in the sea of darkness. Now, the first C is S W E and the second C is S E A. So that's the literary meaning, but uh, technically speaking, it's the prime visual function by virtue of, uh, of which finer details of any object or print is recognized. It is the function of retinal fovea, where specialized developed cones are trained to pick up minute details of very specialized job, for, which vary from individual to individual. Now, most of us confuse vision with visual acuity. Now, here the word acute or acuity actually uh, is a self-explanatory word. It is the acute, finer, detail uh, uh, vision, which is cons which is the function of the fovea. Unless you move the fovea to an object, you won't have a detailed detailed vision of that area. Now, you are moving your fovea to look at this slide, and on the slide, if you like to concentrate on the ophthalmic examination, you'll move your fovea there, and you'll have a finer. Once you move your central vision or foveal vision away from the, uh, from the ophthalmic examination, it will not be very clear. So vision depressed decreases once it is moved from the fovea to the perifoveal and then macular and paramacular and then peripheral retina. Now I'd like to just touch uh, in my presentation the visual acuity, color vision. These all, this visual acuity, color vision, visual field, ocular movement, in, and then the inspection of the eyelids and eye and torch examination uh, and like to give you some example uh, how this test is done and what do we expect out of the test. So visual acuity, now we, why visual acuity is checked? To know the basic visual assessment of an individual. It's very important to check the visual acuity in children because once they have crossed the age uh, like eight years or so, whatever vision they have, they, it will be, remain as such for the rest of their life. Now, eight years is a cutoff point. That's the, that's the boundary after which improvement chances are not possible. If one of the one of the eye is lazy eye or one of the eye is amblyopic, we call it amblyopic, uh, and the individual has crossed the age of eight years, there's nothing we can do to improve. Before the age of eight years, there are chances that 100% recovery is uh, would be possible if proper treatment is given. So, so a child at the age of like has come up at the age of four or five. It's very important to ch to check the visual. It is very simple to place a Snellen's test type or a card at six meter and ask with one of the eye closed, ask the child or individual to read, and it's, it's very simple to 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 actually uh, practice. And a visual acuity is checked, uh, checked for uh, refractive errors and for organic pathologies. The standard test type is a Snellen's test type in which the patient is asked to sit at 6 meter or 20 feet and then they asked to read the board. Now, there are letters of larger size on the board and there are letters with a smaller size on the, on the board, on the, on the card. And it, um, 6 meter is chosen for the reason that light rays which are coming from 6 meter or away, they are parallel. So a parallel light rays will not initiate any accommodation of the eye. 
So, now if we, if we, if we uh, uh, discuss the uh, refractive power of the eye, now I'm, I'm using plus one, most of you would be you know, around one or two, either plus or minus. The power, the refractive power of the eye is plus 62 diopter, so very, very high refractive power. Now the reason is the light rays which are coming from the far object, they are, to, they are supposed to focus on the retina which is 23 or 24 millimeter from the front of the cornea. So a very, very con high power converging system is required so that the light are properly focused on the retina. So light rays which are coming from 6 meter or, or away, they are parallel and they won't initiate any accommodation uh, in the eye. Hence. In a normal emetropic eye, they are supposed to focus on the retina. Uh, the out of 62 diopter, 42 diopter is the power of the cornea, and 20 diopter is the power of the lens. But the power of the cornea is it cannot be changed; it's a fixed power. However, the power of the lens vary. It has a uh, in during the early, you know, I mean, children they have a very strong converging power. They can accommodate to as high as 14 or 15 diopter plus. At the age of 40, we have accommodation like plus 6. At the age of 50, it's about plus 4. At the age of 60, it's plus 1. And after 70, there is no accommodation. So, uh, uh, any uh, before 6 meter, if the light rays are coming from beyond, uh, before 6 meter, they are not straight, they are divergent. And once the rays are divergent, they initiate accommodation. So in emetropic state, we make the patient to six, six meter. Now, there is a numerator and a denominator. The new, new, numerator is the distance at which the patient sits, which is six in, in our system. And as the American says, it's 20. They convert or read in, tw in feet and 20. And denominator is the distance at which that or, uh, letter should subtend an arc of five minutes on the retina. Now, that's a technical I'll explain later on. But the top letter is 6 by 60. If we take the top letter to 60 meter away, it will appear to be of size at 6 by 6 size. You know, it will be smaller. So likewise, 6 by 36, 6 24, 6 18, 6 12, 6 uh, 9, 6 6. 6 6 is the normal vision. Uh, 3 meter but uh, then uh, accommodation uh, it will be initiated we don't want any accommodation but I have developed something which is different if you have a flat screen and you have a no, there is no accommodative element on the object or the, or the target you can do it at 3 meters 2 meters or 4 meters as well the standard teaching is 6 meter and away. now you can see uh, there's the, uh, the the American notification 20 by 2, 20 feet and to over 200 feet, and the normal is 2020. That's, uh, that's a common uh, uh, term. Now, the, it is calculated uh, by d dash over d, where d is the standard viewing distance. You need six meter, and d is the uh, distance at which each letter of this line subtend five minutes of arc. Each stroke of letter subtending one minute. The, the, the picture is self-explanatory. It will subtend an angle of five minutes with the smaller edge of one minute arc. You know, the resolution of the cones of the phobia, which are very, very highly developed specialized cones, can read only one minute of arc, not less than that. Again, it's a short arc, it will not be readable. Now, there are factors which affect the visual acuity. Uh, refractive error, size of the pupil, illumination, uh, time of exposure, uh, of the target area of the retina stimulate. Now that's important. Fovea or foveola, the central point of the fovea has the most sharp vision, which we can say like 6-6. Six, six. If you move slightly away from the fovea, it will not be 6-6, six, six, it will be 6-9. Further away, 6-12, further away, 6-18, and in the periphery it is like 6-60 or so, maybe less than that. And the state of adaptation um, of the eye and eye movement. Now, I'll give you example of the myopic uh, deficiency. Uh, in myopia, the distance vision is a clearer. There is a clear near vision. That's the reason they are known as short-sighted. Close vision is better than the far. So, without glasses, the distance vision is better. Now, if you look at the left picture, that is 
This is a normal. Here is a myopic eye with a deficiency of minus one. So you can see that three or four lines, all lines are blurred, but three or four lines are uh, clear. You can, you can make out the fifth line as well. With minus two deficiency, the board, the first two line is just hardly readable. And with minus three deficiency, everything is blurred, or even, even the top letter. So uh, if the, the patient is not reading the board, you can buy uh, just uh, analyzing the level of, you know, uh, to what level the patient has gone, you can actually tell it's minus 2 or minus 3 or minus 4. Now, uh, this is uh, a normal, uh, I can see, it's a normal eye where the parallel rays are focused onto the retina. In near sighted or short sighted, which are corrected with the minus lenses or concave lenses, normally a parallel rays of light are focused not on the retina, it's in front of the retina. Now what do you need? You need a diverging lens to focus it onto the retina. Now if you just look at this picture, this picture shows that the clearer, clear object is a near object. This fountain is clear. As you go away or far, you can see that the rest of the picture is blurred. It's typical for, uh, for uh, myopia. Now in hypermetropia, in uncorrected state, the parallel rays of light, they focus behind the retina. The converging system is not powerful enough to, control, uh, to focus it onto the retina. You need further addition of some converging lens, which with the help of the eye, uh, converging power focuses onto the retina. Now if you look at the picture, the nearer object is blurred. However, as you go far and far, the vision gets better and better. So this is for true. Now for myopia is, uh, and hypermetropia is very easy to diagnose, but what about astigmatism? Now astigmatism is a condition, it's like, you know, let me give you an example, it's a, a tablespoon or a teaspoon, that one of its curvature is more and the other curvature is flat. So this is the difference, you know, one, one of the focus is, uh, one focus is right on the retina and the other may be in front or behind. Or at times both focuses focus the horizontal and the vertical, they are not on the retina and they are not at the same time. If they are, at, they are at same point, it could be myopia or hypermetropia, but once they are not at same point, then it is astigmatism, which is the difference between the two. Now in uh, uh, the top picture, it's uncorrected astigmatism, the picture is blurred. You can see the torsional effect in the, in the pillars, you can see the blur, blurry tilted effect in the building. However, with the correction, you can see that this is very loud and clear. The color vision, as a, as a general practitioner, is very important to check color vision. With the new, uh, you know, uh, facilities that we have, with the computers, with the net, we can download the various color plates which are available in the market for very high cost and just show it to the patient. And you can actually pick up some toxic effect of the medicine that they are using. So color vision uh, is assessed or checked for basic color deficiency. If somebody has a basic color deficiency, there's, there's nothing we can do to change it just for diagnostic purpose. But uh, for toxic effect of drugs, it is very important that it should be uh, kept in the clinic and it should be done routinely on those patients using at least two out of these four medicine because the middle two are not very commonly used. It is the total dose of the medicine which is responsible for the toxic effect, then the hypersensitivity reaction to any drug. Now, ethambutol is very commonly still used for tuberculosis. The dose is 15 milligram per kilo, kilo, kilogram body weight. And uh, any dose which is beyond above this 15 milligram can potentially damage the optic nerve and causes color vision deficiency at a stage which is very, very earlier than the visual, vis actual visual deterioration. So visual deterioration do come with the toxic effect, but at a later stage. So you can actually, a month before, you can pick up uh, with the help of color vision testing that the patient is, is now having now the tox toxic dose of the drug and we can, uh, should stop it and shift on to another safer medicine. So ethambutol is, uh, um, the, the, with ethambutol and plaquenil, uh, uh, the earliest to go is red-green deficiency. So amidoron is a cardiac arrhythmia, anti-cardiac anti arrhythmic drug, not very commonly used. 
uh, vegabatrin is also a drug which is used in, used to be used in uh, epilepsy, not anymore. But plaquenil is very commonly used. I don't know uh, about you, but uh, for those who are treating the joint condition for systemic diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, they are on plaquenil for a very, very long time. Here, the, the huge, a safer dose is 250 milligram per day. Uh, and actually, we calculate the dose on annual basis with 250 milligram of uh, uh, this plaquenil, uh, which is hydroxychloroquine. Uh, the annual dose comes out to be about 91 grams. So any dose which is 100 or 120 grams is, is taken as comparatively safer dose. The dose beyond definitely leads to the color vision defect and uh, damage to the um, um, optic nerve. Now, not a very good picture, but of course, this is one of the <laughs> uh, beautiful example of nature. Uh, you can see so many um, beautiful color uh, on this. Uh, colors actually brings everything. Now, you can just consider that everything. That 10 or 20 years, 20, 30 years back, we used to see uh, black and white movies, and we were very good, uh, you know, uh, used to enjoy that, but not anymore. Would you like to see a black and white movie now or a color movie? Everybody would like to see color. That is actually the... Uh, uh, now, what colors are? Color is actually a spe special spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum, uh, between 400 and 700 nanometer, which is visible to the eye. And bas there are basically three colors which are perceived by three specialized cones. Red sensing cone, blue and green. Rest all the other color are combination of these two, uh, three colors of varying intensity. Now, uh, the, the picture is shown here for the reason that this is the area that we see. But what about the, uh, the, the wavelength over 700 micrometer and above? And what about the wavelength which is less than 400 micrometer or the cornea has a power to absorb wavelength less than 297 nanometer. So any wavelength which is less than 297 is absorbed, absorbed by the cornea. The lens, human lens, has the power of absorption between 297 and 350. And 350 and 400, they go into the eye. So they can call. But as we move towards the periphery of the spectrum, least uh, uh, wavelength, you can see there are ultraviolet A, B and C, they are very, very dangerous and they are causing a lot of trouble and problem these days for two reasons. Number one, because of the absence of ozone layer in the environment, now the filtering effect is not there and a lot of unwanted light is available in the environment, number one. Number two, uh, for those who had their cataract done and their cataracts have been removed, uh, in one study, uh, the, the lens, human lens, uh, was pro uh, proved to have 2,300 filters. I think an extreme, extreme example of the nature, you know, complexity. It has 2,300 filters. So one filter was a UV filter. So, when the lens is then it's, you know, beyond 297 to 400, every you know, wavelength would go inside and it will damage the retina. Uh, you can see the green, the red, and the blue, and with combination, uh, the central part is, a, you know, with, with the proper proportion, the central part becomes white. So I was told I have, I'm left with 15 minutes. Keep it in your computer and ask the patient. It will take a minute, not more than that. The left side is a normal color. Uh, uh, somebody has a normal color vision can pick up that. Uh, Pointer. It's three. With mild deficiency, the three is read as five, and in severe deficiency, there's nothing readable. So these are the Ishara plates. Sorry? Like. Which is it? There's a three. Mild deficiency and severe deficiency. 
The deficiency could be, you know, congenital or acquired. Acquired in macular diseases and there's another uh, um, uh, subgroup which is toxic uh, neuropathy uh, which can be picked up with proper. There's another method which is the city university method and you can uh, actually read but it's not in round form, it's not uh, in the form of circle, it is in the form of squares. The visual fields uh, is very important and uh, they are done to, um, uh, to pick up space occupying lesion, ischemic inflammatory and degenerative de disorder of the brain. Now, uh, as the picture is, next card. The right half of the field of vision is seen on the left brain. The left half of the field of vision is seen on the right brain. It's very simple to look at, but it's very complicated to analyze. Now, in, uh, this is a picture of uh, if in there is a certain condition in which a central island is left. Example, advanced glaucoma or retinitis pigmentosa. You can see there is a central island of vision left here. If there is a quadrant defect, one fourth defect, it will be seen as this. A central scotoma or a central seco secal scotoma is, is, is a feature of some toxic neuropathy or some uh, macular diseases. This is seen as the central part is not see visible, rest everything else is normal. And this is a hemi bitemporal hemianopia, so loss of half of the field of vision. Now we need to check the ocular movement for neuropathy, myopathy and restrictive ophthalmopathy. The example of the last statement is thyroid eye disease. Now, <coughs> now that's the convergent squint. The other name is esotropia. There's another convergent squint. This is a left convergence, left convergent, and this is a right divergent squint. Now we inspect the eye for squamous blepharitis, the commonest condition that we, of course, you as a general practitioner and we as an ophthalmologist, the, the, the interest is the common, the mode of presentation is the common uh, for you and for us. The uh, squamous blepharitis is the dryness of the root of the uh, hair uh, lash. Ptosis, drooping of the eyelid, entropion, clasium, proptosis, red eye, and orbital cellulitis. Now, this is the squamous blepharitis. You can see that the margin is very thick, swollen, and there are crusts. These crusts go inside the eye and they initiate a lot of rubbing and redness. Very simple, just keep it moist, avoid the infection, some, oint, uh, some antibiotic ointment or so it will take care of the. Okay. That's the ptosis. You can see the drooping of the upper eyelid. It's a congenital ptosis because there is no fold available. Next one. Now that's the entropy and intern, intern, interning of the internal uh, turning of the lower lid. The lashes are constantly rubbing against the cornea and cause watering and redness of the eye. Next one. Now that's the clasion. It's a mevovian gland, chronic inflammatory reaction, and the treatment is a surgical removal. Next one. Now there's a proptosis. The whole of the, both the eyes are pushed forward, and you can see the very staring, glaring look of both the the, the uh, for the possible reason is thyroid ophthalmopathy. Now there's the red eye. Now that's the orbital cellulitis. Now I like to uh, advise here that the orbital cellulitis or preceptal cellulitis is a very very dangerous condition. Always should be treated in time with aggressive treatment 
uh, because because of the communication of the veins from the face to the brain and it can travel to the brain within no time and cause very devastating uh, complications next question. Now that's the Bufthalmos, large set of eyes uh, we see in congenital glaucoma. Before the age of three years, if the pressure of the eye is high, the eye size would become larger. So that's the uh, name given to large eyes, Bufthalmos. Now a white cataract would look like a white reflex behind the iris, the normal iris, normal cornea. In THMA, you can see a white cataract behind that. And you can see a side view here. Now, a patient with cataract would see a little differently. A normal picture would be like this. And a cataract with nucleus sclerosis would, would see this building as a blurred, faint color, blurred margin, blurred borders, and details are not clear. Now, in posterior subcapsular cataract, it's a type of cataract in which the opacity is just behind the posterior, just in front of the posterior capsule. And it will, a normal picture would, would be seen like this, you know, as a light effect. And a posterior subcapsular patient would see this thing as blurred, distorted light points. Glaucoma is a very co uh, common condition that we see in the clinic. The incidence is not known in Pakistan because probably the studies are not done properly. But I think the incidence is somewhere between 10 and 15 percent, which is quite high. And the, and, the, and the point to be worried is that out of uh, the glaucoma that we see in the outdoor, 20 and 25, 15 to 25 percent of glaucoma have a normal intraocular pressure. We call that as low tension glaucoma or normal tension glaucoma. So checking up of, of the pressure is not enough. It's the back of the eye and field analysis that is important. Now a normal eye would see this picture as you can see here. And patient with glaucoma would show so the, this scotoma or visual depression is close to the central vision within the 30 degrees. You can see the slight different uh, loss of clarity in the lower part. This is the defect, which is called the arcuate defect. And in the late stages, you can see there is only central vision left, rest everything else is blurred. Central and a slight temporal view, a field of vision which remains. Age-related macular degeneration due to the overall health condition, due, due to the early aging in our part of the world, not having very good diet, there is no concept of, concept of exercise, there is no concept of taking healthy food, age-related macular degeneration occurs some 20 years earlier in, in Pakistan than in US. They have this problem around 80, 50, 75 or 80 years of age. We have seen cases, number of cases starting 55 or 60 years of age. Ultraviolet light could be one of the reason of, uh, you know, an early initiation of this problem. But um, I think this is something which is uh, required uh, some work and uh, some now now age latent back in a normal view you can see this wall as as a clear wall but those with age related macular degeneration there are two variety dry and wet in wet type you can see the lines are distorted the, the lines are wavy and in advanced cases when there is a scar in the, in, the, in the macular area, you can see there's a total loss of vision in the central. No finer details are available. The rest, everything else is normal. Now, double vision or the diplopia is, uh, is another clinical uh, presentation for those who have uh, can have uh, like uh, muscle paresis, muscle palsies, uh, thyroid ophthalmopathy when the when the eye movement is restricted, myopathies. Uh, the you can see that there is a the picture is not single, you can see double vision, double picture and this is the vitreous hemorrhage can show this picture as you know something coming in is available, is present in between the picture and the retina and a de detachment patient, a normal view and you can see everything is lifted from this side. That shows a corresponding detachment of the retina in the upper temporal quadrant. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you're most welcome to.